Hello my dear students, this is Praveen Bansal teaching class 11th accountancy, chapter number 8, Bills of Exchange. We have already done first part of this chapter. Now we will be doing the second part. If you remember, in the last part we discussed this case when the drawer retains the bill till the date of maturity. I would like to recall that when a seller sells good to a buyer, he draws a bill and seller becomes drawer and the debtor becomes drawee. And we are supposed to record these transactions in the books of accounts, that is journal. And we have discussed the case when the bill is retained by the drawer with him till maturity. Maturity means whatever the time period is plus three days of grace, right? Now we will discuss how this bill would be treated if the drawer does not retain this bill with himself till maturity. And the first case for this is if he gets the bill discounted from his bank. Students, you see Amit sold goods for rupees 20,000 to Sumit on 1st January 2006. And he drew a bill of exchange upon Sumit for the same amount for three months. Three months means January, February and March. The bill will get matured on April. But what if Amit feels like getting the money before that date? Is it possible? So the answer is yes, it is possible. In case if the drawer falls in need of the money before maturity, the drawer can approach a bank and bank will give the money of that bill to the drawer. And on maturity, bank will receive this money from the debtor, that is Sumit. Okay, students, let's see how do we draft journal entries when the bill is sent to bank for discounting and in the case rate of interest is given to us 12 percent per annum discounting charges okay let's understand when the goods are sold to sumit sumit account would be debited because sumit is my debtor and sales would be credited Right? Sumit's account debit to sales. That is on 1st January. Now, he received a bill. We have already learned this thing that when we write a bill of exchange, bill receivable becomes our asset. Bill receivable becomes our asset. The way Sumit was my debtor and he was my asset, after writing bill, bill receivable will become my asset. Sumit will be off and Sumit is credited, right? We have sent this bill to bank and bank is going to give us money. And how much money bank is going to give us? See, bank and Amit are going to talk now. Bank says, if I give this money to you, what is my benefit in that? Then Amit says, if you would have lent this money to someone else, how much interest you would have earned? Then bank says, we usually lend money at the rate of 12%. Right? 
and we are providing you 20,000 rupees which we will receive after 3 months. Bank says this to Amit. That means we are losing an interest of 12% on 20,000 for 3 months. So, Amit says deduct that much of money from my amount and give rest to me. So, this makes it 600. So, Amit is going to get 20,000 minus 600 that is 19,400 in his bank. And 600 is going to be discount. And this discount is debited in the books of Amit because Amit is facing it as a loss, as an expense and all expenses and losses are debited. And bill receivable is slipped from his hands, right? Earlier, bill receivable was debited but now the bill is gone. So, bill receivable would be credited in the books of Amit. Clear students, this is the case how we transfer bill to bank to get it discounted. Discounted means getting the payment from bank before maturity date but on a condition and the condition is the amount would be a bit less and that a bit would be determined by the rate of interest provided in the question. Clear? Okay. Let us see what is the third case. Third case is what if Amit endows this bill to one of his creditor? What does this mean? When Amit sold goods to Sumit, Amit is holding a bill. Amit is holding a bill like an asset. The way he holds cash in his hand, he is holding that bill in his hands. The only difference is cash is highly liquid, but this bill will get converted into cash after 3 months and 3 days. In the same time, Amit is having one creditor in his books. His name is Ankit. The question says, Amit endows the bill to his creditor Ankit. Ankit is Amit's creditor. Amit has to pay to Ankit. When Ankit approaches Amit for money, Amit says, I do not have money. But I have a bill which will get matured after 3 months. So, Amit gives that bill to Ankit and Ankit goes to Sumit who is the debtor for the receivable thing on maturity. Clear? Let us see how do we record in journal. First, when goods are sold by Amit to Sumit, Sumit account debited and sales account credited, right? Now, he will write a bill, bill receivable account debit to Sumit. These are the same entries, right? Now, Ankit becomes debited and bill receivable becomes credited. Try to understand the logic behind this entry. Ankit was my creditor. Ankit was my creditor. He was the liability and we had to pay him and liability is to be decreased. As we gave bill to Ankit, Ankit becomes debited because liability is decreased and remember liability increases from credit and decreases from debit, right? And you can see debit the receiver. Who is receiving the bill? Ankit. That is why Ankit is debited, right? And we received bill, we debited that. 
but we are giving away this bill to Ankit. That is why it is reversed, it is credited. So, the entry becomes Ankit account debit to bill receivable. This is how we do endorsement. Endorsement means when you give your bill receivable to some other person on your behalf, he will collect the money. Okay, students. So, this is known as endorsement. Clear? The next case is Amit retained the bill on 31st March 2006. Amit sent bill for collection to its bank. On 1st April, bank advice was received. It means we order bank to collect the money from the data. This is known as bills sent for collection. That means we do not approach the data. On our behalf, bank approaches. And this is not endorsement. In endorsement, our creditor took the money and we are free from the debt of the creditor. That is it. But in this case, we are sending bank to collect money and the money is coming in our bank only. And in endorsement, the money was coming in the creditor's bank that money is not belonging to me, but in bills sent for collection, bill is sent to the bank and bank is ordered to collect the money and put it into our bank. Like bank is doing a favor to us and it is not a favor actually, it is the function of bank that it do collect money for his clients. Okay. Let us see how do we draft journal entries for this case. For this case, again when you sold goods to Sumit, Sumit account debit to sales account, bill receivable account debited to Sumit account when you drew the bill. Now, you are not getting money directly, rather you gave this bill to bank on 31st March by saying that it is your duty to collect money from my data. So, when the bank will receive this bill from us, he will give a slip to us and that slip is known as bill sent for collection. We can claim that you received a bill from us by showing that slip. So, students you need to focus earlier bill was my asset, but now I have given that bill to the bank and I have received a slip and that slip is the proof that I have given this bill to the bank. Now, that slip becomes my asset and the name of that slip is bills sent for collection, right? Bill sent for collection account debited to bill receivable. Bill is gone and a new asset bill sent for collection is into my basket and that is debited, okay? And now the question says that on 5th of April, bank collected that money, okay? When bank collected that money, bank account would be debited since the money came in and that slip would be torn because you have collected the money, you have got the credit in your bank. When you receive money, bank is debited in your books. Bank account debited and that slip is gone, bills sent for collection. Okay, students? So, if I make a conclusion to do all the entries correct in this chapter's bills of exchange, you all must know the basic rules of debit and credit. When an asset is increased, when a liability is increased or decreased, 
I would like to make you recall there are five accounts assets, expense, liability, income and capital. Assets and expenses increases from debit and decreases from credit. Liability, income and capital increases from credit and decreases from debit. Bill receivable is an asset. Whenever you or any other person will receive that bill receivable, it is an asset. It will be recorded on the debit side since it is increasing. In the same way, bill sent for collection, the new word you learnt, it is also an asset to you. So, it will increase and it will increase from debit. But what if these bills are endorsed, transferred or get matured? They have done their part and they are to be decreased. So, they will be recorded on the credit. Bill payables are your liabilities. When we draw the books of Droy, he receives bill. So, what do you make? You say two bill payable. Two bill payable means bill payable is credited. So, liability liability increases from credit and decreases from debit. So, this is how I sum up the rules of debit and credit and you all must focus on these rules only if you want to do all the entries correct in the chapter bills of exchange. So, students you all are advised to do the similar kind of questions given in your textbook. I would like to give a quick recap what have we done so far? We learnt who is drawer, who is troy, who is pay, who makes a promissory note, who writes a bill of exchange. Then we learnt the difference between promissory note and bills of exchange. Then we started with drafting journal entries in the books of drawer and troy. When the drawer writes a bill, there could be many cases. First, he can retain the bill till maturity, he can transfer the bill to bank and get the bill discounted and then we learned how can the bill be sent to some creditor and this is known as endorsement and at last we learned the bill sent for collection. So, these all are the cases we have done so far. In the next part, we would be studying how the bill gets dishonored. Dishonored means when the debtor refuses to pay for the bill. This is it for this part. Thank you very much.